Hey, this is Joe from SoFly, and in this video, we are going to import orders into WooCommerce from a CSV using WPL import and the WooCommerce add-on. So you can see here, I don't have any orders yet. So we're going to import them. So the first thing to do is go down here to all import and select new import. And we have three options, how to get our data into WPL import. We can use an existing file. If we've already previously uploaded that file with WPL import. We can download a file from a URL like Dropbox or Google Drive or a server or something like this. Or we can upload from an FTP server or an SFTP server. In this case, I'm going to upload a file from my computer. Select upload a file. And here is my CSV. Now your order data is probably not going to look exactly like this. So it doesn't really matter how your data is set up. This is how mine's set up for this import. Um, I have the usernames here, so I'm going to be matching the users that are already in my WordPress site to these orders. I'm going to be matching the products here for the SKUs with the quantities for each of them. In your case, maybe you're just going to be importing orders without the customers already in there or without the products in there. And maybe your, your order file that you're importing just has all of the actual customer data and all of the actual product data in it. That's totally okay too. WPL import can handle it. And we'll go over all that in our video. So starting up, I am going to select this file and upload it into WP all import. And now I have two options. We can import to existing items. If we're trying to match these to existing orders and update some of the information in this case, I don't have any orders. I'm importing new ones. So we'll leave new or new items selected. Then from here, we're going to select WooCommerce orders from the pull downs. So we're going to create new WooCommerce orders for each record in my file. All right. Now it's pretty good. So we're going to continue to step two and start setting up our import. All right, so it's detected 5,754 rows that will be imported, and each row in click through is going to be a different order. We have some filtering options here. So for example, if I just wanted to import um, orders that were after 2021 or something like that, or after 2022, we could do that over here. We could select, for example, like order date, and the rule is going to be greater than 2022. So that's only going to import the new orders, et cetera, et cetera. In this case, I just want to import all of these files or all of these orders. So I'm just going to leave these blank and continue to step three. And here's where we're going to actually set up our import. So the first thing up here, we have our order status. I don't have an order status here in my import file. And that's because everything is going to be completed. All of my orders I'm importing, we're just going to hard code the status as completed. If I had a column in here that had the order status in it, and if the order statuses were all different, and if I wanted to import those different order statuses, you could go down here and select set with XPath and then drag and drop that status in. In this case, like I said, everything's completed. So we're just going to use that. Now I do have an order date, right? And WPL import is pretty smart. Um, any human readable date is going to work. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drag over a completed date into here. So now the order date is going to be the date here from this file. Now we have the billing and shipping details. So this is going to be our customer data. Now I already have the customers here on my site and I'm going to match them with the username. Um, so I don't need to import these as a guest customer. If I wasn't matching to existing users, um, what I could do is if I, my file here had all of the shipping and information and stuff like that, I could drag and drop it in. If I don't drag and drop the data in the import's still going to work. It's just not going to have this data in it. Um, right. So I am going to try to load the data from an existing customer. And as you can see here, if no customer is found, the order will be skipped. I can match by username, email, custom field, user ID. In this case, I have the usernames. So I'll just drag that in. And if no match is found, we'll import them as a guest and we'll just leave all this blank. Now for shipping, we're just going to copy it from the billing information that's already in our customer. That's here in the WooCommerce site or so the WordPress site and we're good payment. Just going to leave this empty. I have the transaction ID over here. So I'll drag and drop that in everything. We can just leave this as now uh, let's select what here direct bank transfer is fine. doesn't really matter. For me, for this import, for you, all your payment methods are going to show up in here. And if you had a column over here, again, that had your payment information in there, your payment method, you would just drag and drop it in like that. Select set with XPath, 
And then over here, it's going to tell you what the slug, like what the actual data from your airport file needs to be, right? So if it was CFD, the slug would need to be for your, for your title. I mean, for your import data, your column would have to be like COD, PayPal, check, et cetera. We just need to match whatever WooCommerce expects. Um, in this case, again, we'll just stick with direct bait transfer because I'm not too fussed about having the payment, um, payment method be correct for these. All right. So now we're going to try and match our order items. So going down here to advance, multiple products are separated by pipe and I do have multiple products, right? So we're going to try and match these from our existing products that we already have on our site. So we have the product SKU here and our product SKU here. So I'm going to drag in number one and add a pipe number two, tab to the pipe and number three. I can tell this hit. Now you can see here, SKU three empty, but not for all of them. So we're going to drag all of them in like that. Um, the price here is going to be pulled automatically from our product page, from the actual products that we're matching by the SKU. We have to put the quantity for how many people ordered. So we'll drag in QT one with a pipe and I'm a lazy person. So I'm going to just do this and we'll change. Here, so this is going to be QT2 and quantity three. There we go. All right, so this looks good. Scroll down, fees. Just going to leave this blank. I don't have any fees. Don't care about my coupons. Shipping doesn't matter. If you had your shipping information, you can drag it in. Taxes, leaving it blank. Not going to deal with refunds. Totals, I'm going to calculate the order total automatically. Um, if I had a field in here that said how much money they paid, I could drag it in. In this case, WPL import is just going to match the products, calculate it up. Okay. They bought this, this many things, uh, based on the quantity, put the total in there and we're done. Uh, notes. I don't have any notes, but if you did, you'd import them, uh, this way. And again, if you have multiple notes, separate them here, you could change the separator if you want. Custom fields, don't have any of those. Advanced custom fields are supported for orders. I'm not using that, so I'm just going to leave that blank. And then down here, we have our function editor. So all of these text fields that we have, this data can all be processed with custom PHP functions. So you just write the function here and then wrap this imported data in the function. And the output of that function is what is going to be importing. In this case, I don't need to do any special heavy lifting. Um, if you don't know how to use PHP, don't worry about it. You don't need to, but if you do know PHP, pretty powerful stuff. All right. So my import is all set up. I'm going to go ahead and continue to step forward. Okay. So the unique identifier here is used by WPL import to determine which records are unique and which ones are copies of each other. Uh, so we can just auto detect it here and it's going to use the transaction ID and the SKU to determine if these are unique. That sounds pretty good to me. Um, we can just leave all these as the default. This is mostly, um, telling WPL import how to handle this. If, uh, we are running the import again, but I'm only going to run this once so we can leave this blank or leave this with the default settings. Down here, we have email notifications for our customers. Uh, this one's kind of tricky. So we have to pay careful attention to this one. Um, when we create new orders in, uh, W in, in WordPress with WooCommerce, the users will get an email telling them there's all sorts of emails they get right for when their orders are processed. We obviously don't want to be sending users, uh, order notifications during our import, right? Um, because these orders have actually already been completed. We're just running the import. So we want to block these. However, there are some email plugins out there that will do their best to make sure that these emails actually get sent. We do our best to block them, but. Sometimes those plugins make sure the emails get sent. So if you're using email plugins, probably a good idea to dis disable them during this import process or run a test import and just make sure that we're actually blocking the notifications, right? In any case, I'm going to leave this checked. Um, scheduling options. We're not scheduling this import. If I was going to be running this on a schedule, um, then I would go down here and I'd tell WPL import, Hey, run this every Monday or run this every hour or something like that. And then the URL that I'm running the import from, it's going to pull that import file and then update my site based on the settings I define here. In this case, I'm just running the import once, so it doesn't matter. 
we have some advanced options down here. If you're writing into like server limits and stuff like that with your uh, import being terminated because it's taking up too many resources, then you can have a play in here. We're not doing any of that. This is going to run just fine. So we're going to leave all those with the defaults and we will continue and confirm and run the import. All right, so this is going to take a few minutes to run. We'll let it do its thing and we will come back when it's finished. Okay, so that didn't take too long. All of our orders were successfully imported. Let's go ahead and check them out in WooCommerce. All right, and here we go. So we have all of our orders here. Let's go ahead and open one of them up and see here the dates all came in okay, right? Because we know because we ran our import and these dates are all different, right? So they're not actually uh, showing the import date. So the date went in correctly. Just kind of pick a random one here, open it up. And there's our products in there and we have our customer data and everything looks good. So this is one way to import our orders. In this case, we had already run an import for our products to add them to the site and a list of our customers. And then during our order import, we matched the orders to our products and the customers we'd already imported. Um, check the description below. We have some videos on how to migrate customers and migrate products into your site which you'd want to do before you're doing this. Um, you've got to run those imports first and then you can match them. However, you don't have to do it that way. Again, you can run your order imports without the data as um, being matched. And these would all be imported as guest customers and the product data would still show up. Check the description below. We have a video going over that process to give you a little bit more information on how to do that. So that's all it takes to import your orders with WP all import. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.